Hey everyone, how's it going? I just want to give a quick thank you to all of you who stopped by my latest video to congratulate me on 100 subscribers. That's I feel the love, you guys. You guys are truly amazing, and I'm so glad to be here. So glad to be a part of your life and have you be a part of mine. Truly amazing. So today is another special day. Uh, I took the day off. Um, we are driving, and by we, I mean you guys and me, are driving to go see my firstborn for his 16th birthday. I haven't seen him in 12 years, and I'll explain why later, but um, I make it a point to have him on my mind every single day, as I know that he is in my heart, and I can never forget about him. So as I drive there, I am smoking my 7LE, my latest acquisition. 7LE 673 Fantasia. Alright guys, well, I'm going to log off for a minute. Stay tuned, because we're almost there. Hey everyone, we're back. So we're here, and everything looks to be in order. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my son. Vince Michael Munoz, who was born on April 25th, 2007. Today he is 16 years old. Yes, sir. This little boy right here had brought me four years of joy one of them being very difficult. Now there's no reason to feel sad, but there's every reason to feel glad. This little boy gave us the best four years of his life. He was a super sweet kid, I'll tell you that much. Anybody who came into contact with him instantly fell in love with him. I remember one instance, we had gone to this show here in Orange County, California called the OC Punk Rock Picnic. And it was a show put on for um, autism, a benefit for autism. And at this show, my son was just running around talking to everybody Mind you, he was only not two years old. And one particular person who was a photographer, she saw him and just started snapping pictures of him. And he was not posing. He was just being himself, but every picture she took that she sent to us later on, he looked like he was modeling. That's how gorgeous and how, and how charismatic he was. He was just a people person. <laughs> he was a people baby. Everybody loved him. Everybody loved him. Everybody wanted to be around him. Everybody wanted to talk to him, hold him. Pardon the tractor. <laughs> Some poor souls being buried today. Pardon me while I relight. So what had happened was, two weeks after my son Louis was born, that's my youngest, my son Vince was then diagnosed with medulloblastoma, which is a very aggressive brain cancer, in which only 20% of people who are diagnosed only survive four years. We only got one. But it could have been worse. The neurosurgeon prepped us and told us that once he was finished with the surgery that our son would, would or could wake up blind, deaf, mute, immobile, 
all the above or simply just pass away on the table. You could imagine that type of situation would break a parent. And it did. It broke me to my core. However, the Lord had different plans. The Lord allowed my son to wake up as if he had just been asleep. He was able to talk, see, hear, move, still feisty as can be. The Lord bless us with our son. Granted, for the last year of his life, he did go through chemo in and out of the hospital. I lived at the hospital. I spent the night there every night that he was in the hospital. I was with him until morning, then his mother would come and spend the day with him. I'd go to work. For a full year, that's how it was. And he was in the hospital more often than he was at home. So that was kind of tough, but I would not have changed anything about that time that I spent with him because that was my last year with him. So I didn't care. When you have a, when you have children, you you'll go through hell and back. So then he was able to experience his final birthday on April 25th, 2011. And then four months later, he would then be called home to be with the Lord. What a beautiful day that was though. Because as I, as I sit here and I reminisce about him being born, being able to watch him come into this world, and then also to be there as he transitions into glory. It might sound morbid, but that there is no better memory than to have when one witnesses the birth of their child and the passing knowing that you were there the whole time to experience every single aspect of their life up until their transition. So again, there's no reason to be sad, but every reason to be glad. Because I will see him again one day. And granted, I will not be his father in heaven, because he has that already. He's had that since the moment he was formed in the womb, as we all do. But I will see him again in his new little glorified body, healthy and well, and full of real life. I mean, that boy was full of life here on earth. I cannot imagine <laughs> the kind of life he has right now in heaven. I cannot imagine... I, my small, finite brain can only imagine him running amok, causing trouble, causing the Lord to run after him and chase him down and tell him to behave and don't touch this, don't touch that. <laughs> I don't think that's how it is in heaven, but I can only think that because that's just what I experienced here on earth as his father. And um, if my son could hear me, I would just love to tell him that I love him, I thank God for him, I'll always remember him, and he will always be with me in my heart. And that brings me true joy, true joy in knowing that we have a Heavenly Father who loves us, who has entrusted our children to us so that we may take care of them, grow them up in God's ways, so that when they get to heaven they know what to experience.
And that is one of the things that I told my son before he passed away. I don't know what prompted me to tell him this, but we were in his hospital room on his bed and he was falling asleep. And I had told him, you know, I love you. You know, I care so much about you. But did you know that you have another father who misses you? He didn't respond, he was just listening. And I told him, I said, you have a father who's gonna call you home one day because he misses you so much. And you'll be able to see him. And when you see him, you're gonna remember what I told you. And it's gonna be a great day. He didn't say anything. I think what he said, anytime I would talk to him, he would just always say, okay. Because <laughs> not the very last time, but one of the last times I told him that I loved him. We were in his hospital room. It was dark. And I started recording. I just pressed record on my camera. And, and I told him, I said, Vince, I love you. And he says, I love you too. And I said, I love you a lot. And he goes, okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, that boy. I love you, buddy. So anyway, with that, I'm going to log off because I am going to spend some more time here. Smoke maybe a few more bowls of Brunello Flake in my Vinny. This pipe has been dedicated to Vince. Why? Because this is the Savinelli 673 Fantasia. My son was a huge fan of Disney. And when I think of Fantasia, I think of Walt Disney's Fantasia. So I'm going to go ahead and puff on this Vinny a little bit longer here. Spend some time in remembrance. Because again, he's not here. But he is right here. He will always be right here. Until the day we're reunited. That's where he'll remain in my heart and in my memory. God bless you guys. I hope you guys have an excellent and wonderful day. And remember to always tell those you love that you love them. Because like Tramper Scott said once, tomorrow is never promised. God bless you all. Have a great day.